heaters and steam exchangers. Heaters and steam heat exchangers are used to raise the temperature of well effluents to prevent hydrate formation, reduce viscosity, and break down emulsions for efficient separation of oil and water. Heaters and steam exchangers are used to raise the temperature of well effluent for a number of reasons. 1. Hydrate prevention. Water is often produced from a well in varying quantities and is often unavoidable and an inevitable consequence of production. Natural gases also contain a proportion of water vapor. Under certain choked flow conditions, the change of conditions across a choke is sufficient to lower the temperature such that the free water and light hydrocarbons in the natural gas become solid. Natural gas hydrates have the appearance of hard snow and they are formed above the normal freezing point of water. Certain gases, particularly H2S and CO2 promote the problem. Hydrates can become a serious problem by causing valves and flow meters to become inoperative and chokes to plug. A heater may alleviate this problem. 2. Viscosity Reduction If an effluent has a high viscosity, the ease with which it will flow through a pipe is impaired. This is not normally a problem in well testing but occasionally, combined with the effects of changes in composition as the reservoir fluid is brought to surface, the viscosity becomes very high and causes problems. As viscosity is temperature dependent, heating the well stream helps the flow characteristics. 3. Emulsion Breaking With production of water from a reservoir, it is necessary to separate oil from water. Under certain conditions the oil and water are miscible and will not separate unless the temperature of the effluent is raised. The three things necessary to cause an emulsion, two immiscible phases, agitation and emulsifying agents, are commonly present in oil-producing systems. Fine solids, carbonates and sulfate compounds can react with certain crude oils to form surface films around the water droplets, which become very stable and difficult to break. Heat assists in the emulsion breaking process by increasing the temperature of the immiscible fluids, reducing the viscosity, deactivating the emulsifying agents and allowing the dispersed droplets of water to collide. As the droplets collide they grow in size and settle to the bottom. 4. Foam Reduction The major cause of foam is impurities in crude oil that would be impractical to remove in a well-testing situation. Foaming presents good separation and sometimes gives separator level regulation problems. The amount of foam is dependent on the pressure drop, and in some cases the temperature effect is quite spectacular. For this reason, foam suppression may result if the crude is heated. 5. Increased burner efficiency. Typically, the higher the temperature of a fluid, the more efficiently it will burn. Indirect fired heater. The skid-mounted indirect-fired diesel heater is used for raising the temperature of well effluents to prevent hydrate formation, reduce viscosity, and break down emulsions. This unit consists of a vessel for water bath at atmospheric pressure, a 4-inch split coil with intermediate choke, and an adjustable choke with a 1.5-inch seat and solid stem tip. A manifold is equipped with three 3.125-inch gate valves rated to 5,000 psi working pressure. The heater also includes a diesel shutdown valve actuated by a pilot light stoppage and temperature controller, a flame arrestor on the burner air inlet, and a spark arrestor on the chimney exhaust. Steam Exchanger Because steam heat exchangers drastically reduce risk, they are used on offshore platforms and in other work conditions where safety regulations do not permit the use of indirect fired heaters. The steam heat exchanger is a steam vessel with two coils through which the well fluid passes. A choke assembly between the coils enables the well to be controlled at the steam exchanger instead of at the choke manifold. An inlet manifold with three gate valves controls fluid flow and provides a way to bypass the coils and choke. To maintain a preset temperature, the steam flowing into the vessel is regulated by a steam control valve SCV on the steam inlet. A steam trap is mounted on the steam outlet line. The exchanger requires an adequate steam supply for operation. Some rigs have a sufficient steam supply, but usually a steam generator is required. The steam vessel is protected by a safety relief valve and a high-pressure pilot connected to the emergency shutdown system. The steam exchanger is insulated on the outside with glass wool and is covered with an aluminum jacket.
The indirect fired heater is skid mounted with a protective flame and consists of a water vessel containing two coils through which the fluid passes. The water is heated by a diesel burner and remains at atmospheric pressure. A choke assembly enables the well to be controlled at the heater rather than the choke manifold after the well fluid has passed through the first coil section. An inlet manifold of three gate valves controls fluid flow and provides a bypass of coils and choke. The diesel flame is regulated by an automatic control valve to maintain a preset water bath temperature. A shutdown valve cuts the diesel supply if the pilot light is extinguished. Indirect fired heaters are designed with outputs of 1 million BTU per hour or 2 million BTU per hour and have a 5000 psi working pressure coil design. An air-driven hydromechanical gear pump will pump a maximum of 55 barrel per day in order to fire the heater. There is no integral fuel tank, and typically the pump sits on top of a drum full of diesel. The flow rate of the diesel supplied to the burner is controlled by adjustment of the air regulator on the pump unit. The thermostatic valve is designed to regulate the temperature of the water bath at the desired value. At a standstill, the sensor bulb is cold and the valve is open. When the burners are alight, the water bath temperature heats the bulb and the fluid inside the capillary tubing and the valve control head expands, thus exerting a force on the valve stem proportional to the temperature. When a certain temperature is reached, the force is higher than that of the return spring, and the valve closes, thus cutting off the fuel supply. The burner flame is extinguished. When the burner flame goes out, the water bath and the bulb cool down, the fluid in the expansion chamber contracts and the valve opens by means of its return spring. The burners are again supplied with fuel and they will relight. The heating temperature is adjusted by a screw which regulates the force of the spring. The CMA flame out shutdown system closes a pneumatic safety valve in the fuel line when the propane gas pilot light goes out. By turning the manual reset knob to the right, the gas inlet in the three-way valve opens, and gas passes to the safety valve servo motor and the pilot simultaneously. The safety valve opens and the pilot can be lit with the igniter. Once the pilot is alight, the mercury in the sensor and the capillary expands and pushes the stem down on the pivot bushing. This causes the orifice to remain open even when the manual reset knob is released. If for some reason the pilot flame goes out, the mercury in the capillary tubing cools down, the stem retracts and the return spring causes the valve handle to move, thus closing the inlet. As the safety valve servo motor is no longer supplied with gas, the valve closes by means of its return spring. Consequently there is no danger of fuel being supplied to the main burner when the pilot is not alight. Heaters, Equipment and Selection Guidelines Equipment is available in 3000s and 5000s PSI pressure ratings. The 3000s PSI version is heli-portable. Selection guidelines depends on Pressure rating requirements Heating capacity, measured in British thermal units per hour Safety regulations Available space Additional considerations are Air supply for the diesel burner and sweep system of the indirect heater. The heater needs electricity for the ignition of the pilot light. The indirect heater needs diesel supply and a diesel pump for the burner. The indirect heater needs propane to supply the pilot light. Water and corrosion inhibitors are needed to fill up the vessel of the indirect heater. Heaters, safety. A perfect understanding of the diesel, propane, and air circuits is a prerequisite to a successful and safe job. Before starting or restarting the indirect heater, sweep out the fire tube with fresh compressed air. In the event that gas or diesel vapors are present, this practice can avoid an accidental explosion. Do not touch the water vessel with bare hands when the indirect heater is working. Verify that the spark arrestor is installed on the chimney. After the job, flush the coils thoroughly with soft water and fill them with corrosion inhibitor before storage. Never flow the well through the coils if a choke is not installed. Sand particles or corrosive fluids can erode the threads in the choke box. Do not use the adjustable choke to stop the flow, you can break the stem tip. 
Do not use the gate valves on the indirect heater as chokes. Do not transport the indirect heater when it is full of water. The frame cannot support this extra weight. Before starting the indirect heater, verify that the inlet and outlet valves of the coils are open. If the coils are filled with liquid and the valves closed, the thermal expansion that results can generate enough pressure to burst the coils. Steam Exchanger, Principles of Operations The unit is skid-mounted with a protective flame and consists of a steam vessel containing two coils through which the fluid passes. A choke assembly enables the well to be controlled at the heater, rather than the choke manifold, after the well fluid has passed through the first coil section. An inlet manifold of three gate valves controls fluid flow and provides a bypass of coils and choke. The steam flow into the vessel is regulated by an automatic control valve on the steam inlet to maintain a preset effluent outlet temperature. There is a steam trap on the steam outlet line. The steam vessel is protected by a safety valve with a flange available for either an additional safety valve or a 6-inch bursting head. The steam vessel is insulated with glass wool and is covered with an aluminum jacket. Steam heat exchangers are required in certain geographical locations where regulations do not permit the use of indirect heaters. As there are no naked flames, like in the indirect heater, the steam exchanger is intrinsically safe in terms of risk due to fire. Whenever the steam heat exchanger is anticipated, it is necessary to check the availability and characteristics of the steam supply. Most offshore rigs do not have sufficient steam generation capacity. Under these circumstances, it is required to supply a steam generator which is usually rented from a specialist firm and located on a safe area on the rig. Steam heat exchangers generally have an output of 4.3 million BTU per hour and are available in 5,000 PSI, 10,000 PSI, and 15,000 PSI working pressure designs. The temperature controller system continuously monitors the difference between the effluent temperature leaving the steam heat exchanger temperature and its set point. It produces an air signal that is a function of this difference which is transmitted to a control valve. This control valve regulates the steam intake. The steam trap, automatic bleeder, has two main functions. 1. Maintain the steam pressure inside the body of the steam heat exchanger in order to give the corresponding temperature. 2. Eliminate water, condensed steam, from the vessel without letting steam escape. The safety relief valves are installed on all pressurized vessels to protect the vessel from being pressurized above its working pressure. On the steam exchanger there is one valve set to open when pressure exceeds working pressure. If the steam exchanger vessel pressure acting on the piston exceeds the spring force acting opposite way, the valve lifts from the seats and open. Steam Exchanger, Equipment and Selection Guidelines Equipment The steam exchanger is available in 5000s, 10000s, and 15000s PSI pressure ratings. There is also a heli-portable steam exchanger available. Selection Guidelines depends on Pressure Rating Requirements Heating Capacity Safety Regulations Note. In some countries, a steam exchanger must be used because safety regulations prohibit the use of indirect heaters. The steam exchanger is intrinsically safe in terms of fire risk because it does not use a flame to heat the well effluent. Additional considerations are. A steam generator is needed for the steam exchanger. Air supply for the temperature controller of the steam exchanger. Steam Exchanger, Safety Do not touch the steam vessel with bare hands when the steam exchanger is working. After the job, flush the coils thoroughly with soft water and fill them with corrosion inhibitor before storing the steam exchanger. Never flow the well through the coils if a choke is not installed. Sand particles or corrosive fluids can erode the threads in the choke box. Do not use the adjustable choke to stop the flow, you can break the stem tip. Do not use the gate valves on the steam exchanger as chokes. Do not transport the steam exchanger when it is full of condensate water. The frame cannot support this extra weight. 
Before starting the steam exchanger, verify that the inlet and outlet valves for the coils are open. If the coils are filled with liquid and the valves are closed, the thermal expansion that results can generate enough pressure to burst the coils. Please hit like and subscribe to our channel in order to help us produce more content like this one. Thank you for your attention and see you in a next video presentation.